his life well.
Christ restored our life, Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism Dixie put on Christ, so in Christ may Dixie be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we are gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Dixie Lee Crosby. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. God, grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. We come here to remember the worldly life of Dixie and to celebrate her eternal life. To affirm the praise and thanksgiving, the goodness of the Lord. Let us rejoice in God's presence with us, in death as in life, among those who mourn as with those who now see God face to face. Our lips will shout for joy, for God's love is over all that is made. Blessed be God's glorious name forever. Let us pray. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially we praise you for Dixie, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them and help us so to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear these words of comfort from the Old Testament, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And from the Gospel of John in the New Testament, Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. For now we are in this world, and we will have troubles and sorrows. In God's economy, this life is very short. Yes, we have problems and times of grieving here in this world. But God's word promises us that there is a better life and a new world that is to come. What wonderful changes there will be when we enter eternity. God will dwell personally with his people in a glorious and intimate way. 
There will be no more tears, death, or sorrow. All of these bad things came into the world through sin, but now the curse is removed. God's it is done parallels Christ's it is finished that he said from the cross. Today you were grief. You may wonder, how can I get through this? I can assure you, God knows what you are going through, and he is here to help. There's a story in the Bible about Jesus that shows how he felt when he lost a friend of his to death. The friend's name was Lazarus. Lazarus had two sisters, Martha and Mary, who, when Lazarus got sick, sent word to Jesus telling him about the sickness. But Jesus didn't go to them right away. He was busy helping other people, and he waited. Here we pick up the story in the Bible. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, she said to him. Yes, the Lord, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, and the one coming into the world. Jesus assured Mother that Martha that everything would happen just as he promised, the way God intended, and that all would see the glory of God. Martha then leaves to tell Mary that Jesus had arrived. When Jesus saw Mary weeping, he wept too. Jesus felt her pain as he feels yours today. Jesus, then Jesus went to the tomb and told the men present to roll the stone away. When that was done, he called out, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus walked out of that tomb, raised from the dead. Jesus knew his own death was imminent, and he wanted the disciples of his to in, that he was indeed God and had the power over life and death. When he was gone, it would be their responsibility to become the messengers who would take this message of life throughout the whole world. Jesus is life. We know it today because of those messengers. When Christ conquered death on the cross by rising from the dead, he paid the price for all our sins. So we can make it on to life everlasting. This life is only the blink of an eye compared to the next life, which is forever. When we die, we will join Dixie there if we believe in Christ's gift to us. He died on the cross for our sins. All we need to do is accept him and believe. Listen to these words from Isaiah 40. Do not, do not know, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, he will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength, strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and the young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. This story impresses upon us what this is like. Derek Redmond was a runner in the British sprint team. He was running the 4x400 relay with his teammates. At the outset of the race, his team was moving nicely along the track. Then came the baton handoff to Derek. His job was to bring it home. His last leg of race should have brought his team the good old and good old England a gold medal. But as he turned the corner, he pulled an Achilles tendon and fell flat on his face. He lay there on the ground in desperate pain. He didn't want to be there, but it was too much pain to get up. 
He began to crawl along the track. You could hear a pin drop as all eyes focused on him, trying to scratch his way forward. It was in the midst of this unfolding drama that a man came down from the stands, went over to the track, and picked up Derek Redmond. One of the judges said, I'm sorry, sir, you must leave the track. The older gentleman waved his hand and said, leave me alone. This is my boy. Derek Redmond's father left the stands from on high and came down to where Derek had fallen down to the dust. The dirt of defeat, he picked him up and put Eric's arm over his shoulder. He put his arms around his son's waist and helped him cross the finish line. The crowd stood up in applause. Derek Redmond and his father got more applause than the runners who didn't fall at all. The people who never fall didn't need help from their daddy. The people who never fell never needed help. They were sufficient to make it on their own. Today, there is someone in the stands who sits up high, who is willing to come down, pick you up, and let you put your arms around his shoulders. He'll put his arm around your waist, and he'll drag you across the finish line. You can still come across the line a winner for the glory of God by relying on him to carry you through. The same Lord who started creation will also finish it. He is the Alpha and the Omega, which are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. In this world today, we have tears and sorrow. When we get to heaven, there will be no more grieving or pain, no more sorrows or hurt. We grieve today because we will miss Dixie. In a myriad of ways, she touched each of our lives as a wife, a sister, a mother, mother-in-law, a grandmother, a great-grandmother, a great-great-grandmother, an aunt and a friend, and always with love. The best gift she passed on to you, her family and friends, was her belief in Jesus Christ. Dixie knew the way to heaven was in a relationship, and that relationship was a belief that Jesus Christ was her Lord and Savior, and she taught it to you. It is a free gift that God offers to everyone, it costs us nothing, but it costs Christ his life, death on a cross. That is a love and grace that none of us deserves, but because of God's love, he wants us all to accept that gift. I'd like to share with you a few verses from Psalm 61, the psalm God led me to on the morning after my own mother's death. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you have heard my vows. O oh God, you have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. God does know of our loneliness and sorrow and he will comfort us as we grieve. But did you catch the last line? O oh God, you have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. We are all blessed by having those dear parents or grandparents or souls who touched our lives and followed the ways of the Lord. In your lives, that person was Dixie. She was one of those who had accepted the salvation offered through the blood of Jesus Christ. She, was hand, she has handed down to you the hope for your lives, your future. Because eternity lasts a whole lot longer than this life we have today. God in his infinite wisdom has given us a hope. It comes with our faith in Jesus Christ. Each of us can know that this is not all that there is to life. There is a far better one to come. Today, we know Dixie has moved on to that better life. Yes, we grieve that she is gone from our presence, but I assure you, she is in a much better place. No more tears, no more sorrow, no more pain. How painful it is to lose those we love. Unfortunately, in this fallen world, our lives are touched 
by loss over and over again. God wants us to enjoy what we love for all eternity, to never experience loss. That is the promise of heaven. In 2 Corinthians, God says, God made it him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We are on all the right terms with God through his Son. When God looks at us, he sees his child in us. I don't go through another person to reach God's throne with my petitions. Rather, I have immediate access because I'm in Christ, who is seated at the right hand of God. There we see the gift of eternal life. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These verses make it clear that Jesus himself is eternal life. This truth keeps us from getting bogged down with earthly circumstances and problems. The moment we place our trust in Christ, we are not given just a longer length of life, but an entirely different quality of life forever. We have been given fullness in Christ, the Bible tells us, because of grace incarnate. We have been given the limitless, ongoing, unmerited love of God. It takes us through life and into eternity. The way to God is not by the Ten Commandments, the Golden Rule, ordinances, or church membership. It is through Christ and Christ alone. Down through the years, people have believed this truth. It is not by being a good person that we get to heaven, but in the belief that Jesus is our Savior. There is comfort in knowing that Jesus is the way, and there is a hope and a promise for all of us who remain. This life is so short. Our bodies wear out, and diseases can take control of our physical bodies, but the life to come is eternal or never-ending. It is our choice where we spend eternity. Dixie Crosby will be missed here on earth, but many years ago she chose to spend her life with Christ. In doing so, she has left you the heritage of eternal life also. May we live this life proclaiming that to others. Dixie Lee Crosby. Dixie didn't feel much love when she was a child, so she always said she wanted a large family, and that is what she got. She had plenty of love for everyone. She loved her family very much and was so proud of all of you. Words that I heard a lot when talking about Dixie were fire, when life knocked you down, loving, caring, comforting, fun, adventurous, and unconditional love. She took the kids to Cedar Point one year just for fun, but left John home because he was afraid of what could happen. The only way they found out Dixie didn't like heights was because she took them to the Tulip Festival in Holland, and they climbed a windmill. When they got up to the top, there, she wouldn't go anywhere near the edge, and she kept pulling them back when they tried to explore what was below. Dawn remembers what a hard worker her mother was. She worked for the state, as well as being a mother of four and mom to many of their friends. There was an open door policy at their home. The neighbor kids came and went as they pleased. She figured the more, the merrier. Dawn especially remembers her 12th birthday. She had planned an overnight party with six of her girlfriends. When she got home from school, she walked into her room and found a big surprise. Her gift from Dixie had been a wallpapered and newly painted room. All I can say is she must have been a quiz at wallpapering if she did it in one day. Dixie had also provided a bedspread with a matching canopy. That is a memory Dawn will never forget. Mom tirelessly worked to provide for others. To this day, her children feel very cherished and loved because of the unconditional love they received from her. Sheldon remembers the special time she had with her mom, especially at Christmas. Shelly loved decorating the tree, and after it had been decorated, she would crawl up into her father's easy chair and sit and watch the lights on the trees. 
Then Ron would come in and sit next to her and cuddle. And she would ask, do you suppose there's a box of chocolate-covered cherries under the tree? Dixie's favorite candy was chocolate-covered cherries, and Shelly always bought a box of them for her for Christmas. It took her a long time to figure out how her mother knew that there was a box of cherries under that tree. Dixie would always say to Shelly, why don't we open the box carefully, then eat the cherries, and I'll buy another box, and we'll wrap it up and put it under the tree, and no one will know but us that we ate the cherries. That's exactly what they did every year. It was their little secret. They would open the box, and Dixie would say, this is my roll of cherries to eat, and this is your roll of cherries to eat. And then they would devour them. <laughs> Renee says she will remember them treasure every moment and memory that they shared. Dixie would call Renee at work, where she would answer, hello, this is Renee. And her mom's response was always, well, hello, this is your mother. When she called her mom, she would always say, what do you know today? Renee became closer to both her folks when she moved up to this area. She always knew she could tell her mother what was going on in her life. And if she complained, her mother's famous response was always, Renee, I gave you those broad shoulders. Mothers and sons always have a special relationship. And that was true with Dixie and John. They were always close, and you knew he held a special place of honor in her heart, and she loved him as unconditionally as she loved the rest of the children. The grandchildren all loved Dixie very much. From Jeremy, who says she was much more than a grandmother to him, she was more like his mother, and he called her his best friend. When Dixie and John stepped in to raise he and his brother, he said he never heard any complaining. Dixie was intuitive where the children were concerned and always knew when Jeremy was having a bad day and needed to talk something out. She could always make him laugh when he had had one of those days. She had a fun, loving spirit. The first time Jessica tried to make dinner, it was all at Grandma's house. She and Julia were making a box of macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Somehow, they missed the part of the directions that said to put the noodles back into the pan after you had and you drained them in the colander. They had left them in the colander, so they dumped on the cheese pack and poured the milk in, and it ran all over the counter. Grandma just left and said, not a problem. She picked up the pan, dumped the noodles in, and took her hand and scraped all the stuff off the counter into that pan. And they had macaroni and cheese for dinner. Jessica also remembers the day her and Jeremy were talking about what their first car and first homes would look like. She told him hers would be a trash can with a leaf blower on it for the motor. When she graduated from high school, she, in her car from Grandma and Grandpa, she found money and a note that told her, this is for your trash can and leaf blower. When you came in on the table, you will find a copy of what granddaughter Heather wrote about her grandmother. And I will just read a few lines that she had put in her eulogy that she wrote. She never complained or became bitter caring for others. was the only way she knew how to survive and maintain her purpose. The kind of love she offered was unconditional. Her family was everything. Her overall mission was to do anything within her power to grant happiness to those closest to her. No matter the cost, no matter the sacrifice, others always came first. Camping was a big part of Dixie's life. They would all go camping together, and of course, they always had campfires, either while camping or in their own backyard. With the, fi with the fire came the making of s'mores. When it came time to roast marshmallows, of course, there was always a child or two who would burn them. And 
no one wanted to eat those burnt marshmallows. Except Dixie. She said, I'll eat those marshmallows. So whenever a child had burnt one, they brought it to Grandma. And she would eat it. Shelly one day asked her if it tasted good, and she said no. <laughs> but she sacrificed anyway. That's the kind of person she was. This had happened many times down through the years, because they did it generation after generation after generation. So Dixie probably ate a mountain of burnt marshmallows in her lifetime. Dixie loved each of you and showed it to you. It is something for which you can all be very grateful. God was true. God has truly blessed each of us whose life Dixie has touched, and we will all miss her. Yet as we grieve her loss, I urge you to tell the stories of her life to each other. Laugh and cry together, and ask for God's healing comfort to fill each of you. When we leave this earth, we can go on to a better, more beautiful life that lasts forever. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and he is the way again to see Dixie Lee Crosby. She is there in heaven today because Jesus was and is her savior. Let's imagine her there as we listen to the song, I Can Only Imagine, written by a man who had a difficult life also. Thank you. 
forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine. Let us pray, and at the end, please join me in the Lord's Prayer. God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you are still God. We pray to you for one another in our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, strength. To all who have sinned, mercy. To all who sorrow, your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways we trust you. And to you, with your church, on earth and in heaven, we offer honor and glory now and forever. In the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Eternal God, you have shared with us the life of Dixie Lee Crosby. Before she was ours, she is yours. For all that Dixie has given to make us what we are, for that of her which lives and grows in each of us, and for her life that in your love will never end, we give you thanks. As now we offer Dixie back into your arms, comfort us in our loneliness, strengthen us in our weakness, and give us courage to face the future unafraid. Draw those of us who remain in this life closer to one another, make us faithful to serve one another, and give us to know that peace and joy which is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and mind in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.